Peace, power, and protection, my beautiful, beautiful Scorpios. Welcome to Claire Audience Truth Speaker. I go by the name of Q, and I am here to do your general reading, beloveds. I would like to welcome all of my beautiful souls that are returning. You already know what it is. Love is love is love is love is love. I send y'all extra love because I love y'all that much. If you are new here, welcome beloveds. I will that this message today provides you some clarification, confirmation, some of them Asians, <laughs> you know. I will that you your energy resonates with mine and I will that you could take away something that will be beneficial to you and your circumstance. If you are new here, uh, the way things work on my side of the planet is, as I said, I am a Claire audience reader. So what I do is I do incorporate music into my readings and the way that it works, the name of the songs, lyrics within the songs, uh, maybe the timestamp on the clock, it will all correlate to whatever I may be channeling intuitively. And it all just blends uh, very beautifully, if I do say so myself. So my my spiel here is eat the fish, spit out the bones, meaning if it doesn't apply, let it fly by, let it go, let it flow, beloved. Never try to force anything to be your story. Know that you are more than just your sun sign. In fact, you have every sign in your natal chart. So it would behoove you to pull that natal chart and see what else you have in your um, in your chart, what other placements you have, I should say, in your chart. And it will just give you a more concise message, beloveds. Uh, so my readings are also timeless. So whenever this video has popped up in your feed, whenever you felt compelled to click play that was in fact divine timing for you to have done so beloveds so without further ado we are going to proceed with the read i know that a lot of y'all be waiting for the messages but you already know i cannot force a message i have to do it when spirit you know tells me now is the time or when i feel like it's the right time i don't want to just pump out readings just for the sake of i really want to be able to build i want to add on to the build i want to be able to add you know um some context to the situation so i feel that there's a lot uh that spirit has to say today hence this reading beloveds um I will, you beautiful souls, are feeling grounded, balanced, and in alignment. Um, if any of you are from Florida, I'm sending you all love and light. Any of you uh, fellow North Carolinians that were up in the mountains and in some of those spaces uh, or places where it was very, um, it, they had devastating impact. Um, I'm sending you love and light, positive peace, power, and protection uh, to each and every one of you. I will that, you know, the most High continues to watch over you. Um, but yeah, this, this there's been a lot going on in the world, um, a lot happening so happening celestially. So it's definitely impacting us here. Uh, but I just feel like Mother Gaia, Daughter Earth, is really going through some sort of um, reset. Uh, there's a lot of natural disasters. There's a lot of karmic lessons being paid off, karmic retributions being uh, played off. There's just a lot going on, even um, you know, in mainstream media. Uh, with these wars in Gaza and Lebanon and you know I just wish it all would stop because you know when people realize that there is no uh, you know no one is more superior than another um, we are all human you know and so that should be you know the the driving force in you know what we what what actions we take and how we treat one another but it's just unfortunate that people still have this inferiority complex where they have to kind of pound in their tum like ancient their their chest like ancient times to prove you know just how powerful and billy badass they are and it's just it's unfortunate because we the people we suffer we suffer from people's egos and and you know inferiority complexes and you know we we suffer from that that's why we are currently in the state that we are in we're going through a recession people are struggling and people are devastated and you know none of these so-called leaders have answers um in fact the <laughs> you know joe biden and them 444 on the clock your angels are watching over you so if you did uh experience those storms you definitely um were being watched over by your angels and your guides and i just got a, a message and it's 347 on the clock i don't even know if i even 
told you what time it was, but 347 at 77. So that seven is really, you know, associated with your crown. So trust your intuition. I feel you're strongly intuitive already, like psychic, clairvoyant, clairaudient. You you have some sort of channeling or psychic abilities. Um, you're able to see through the illusions. You're able to get through, um, you know, some of these, these murky waters, if you will. Um, but there's just too much going on in the world. Uh, and I would just really recommend, you know, that you mind your business. Don't get caught up in the politics um, because it is really like wherever your attention goes, energy flows. And we know that emotion is energy in motion. And I really feel like a lot of the news and all of this social media stuff, it really triggers emotions. And sometimes it triggers the wrong emotion, whether it's anger or frustration. You know, some folks, you know, it could trigger people's hatred, um, you know, and there's a lot of you know, blame gaming going on. No one's taking onus, you know, so it's just really unfortunate what's going on because we, the people, as I said, we're suffering while these idiots are trying to figure out and pointing fingers. No, you did that. No, you did that. And it's just like, yo, like, can somebody figure it out? Um, you know, folks is having a really difficult time surviving out here. Groceries is at an all time high. You go to the store, you could, you know, take $150 at one point in time and, you know, fill up your fridge and now $150 don't get you about a bag of groceries, maybe two. And it's just, it's unfortunate, you know, um, bills are high. There's interest rate. Everything is increasing except for your paycheck. So I tip my hat. I feel like we all need to take a page out of, you know, the, um, you know, those dockers that were striking because at the end of the day, they got what they wanted. You know, they, they shut everything down um, and, and said, if you don't meet our demands, then you won't be asked out. And I feel like I, I've been saying that. Like, I feel like even with these apartment complexes that think every year they should be able to just, you know, increase your rent you know, $60, $70, almost $100 every year, you know, by the time you, you move out, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be paying quadruple the amount. So it's, it's just really um, criminal what's taking place right now. And everyone, you know, the only ones that's making money are these big corporations. We, the people are suffering and we're the ones that keeps the, the, the you know, the, the um, train moving, you know? So it, it, I really wish that, you know, some of us would, would grow some balls, <laughs> you know, and stand in, in, in solidarity and, and demand those same things that those dockers did. Like, look, you know, stop increasing our rent or we're not going to pay. Everybody be on the same page or even at your jobs. Like, you know, if you're not going to give us increases and you want to keep on adding more uh, to our plate in terms of what our job description is. And now they even have in writing that, you know, um, even if the job description wasn't, um, you know, elaborated or pointed out or uh, whatever, you know, if they didn't, exp you know, um, present it in, you know, the beginning stages of you get in the job or during an interview, uh, that doesn't take away that they can add whatever they want if they see fit. So it's like right now my daughter was hired doing one thing and now she's doing like three or four, five things. So it's, it's just really criminal what they're doing. They're, they're expecting more, but paying less, you know, and then we're paying more and they're giving us less. So I was work I was in an apartment complex, um, last year where these fools, they were so short staffed and they were so incompetent that they actually were sending out do it yourself um, tutorials on how to repair and maintenance your own home. And that's part of what the, you know, that's part of the amenity, um, you know, of some of these apartment complexes is just, you know, making sure that, you know, they have maintenance 24 seven. If you, something breaks down, they come, they repair it. These fools was literally sending out DIY emails. You know what I'm talking about? And, and then, you know, charging people when they move out for certain damages. And it's just like, no, you, the, the, it's criminal and I'm over it. It's really sickening. Hold on one moment. My daughter's calling me. Pardon me. So, yeah. So, you know, let me just, um, you know, I'll end my diatribe there. But let's go ahead and proceed with the read. I could go on and on and on, beloved. So many distractions, so many things they want to take your attention away from. Right now, they are trying to implement like this global world order type of ish. They doing stuff with the with the health, you know, where it's one health care or whatever, like one world health. Um, it's, it's sickening. It's really sickening and it's scary, uh, to be honest with you. Um, everyone right now is just trying to, you know, 
just pledge their allegiance to, you know, Israel. And I, I just don't condone genociding any type of country. I don't believe in that. I think that we should have learned eons ago that it doesn't, you know, it's not right. If it wasn't right to happen to you, it shouldn't be right for anyone else to experience that. And the only ones that are suffering are innocent people. You know, these people have been living in constant fear. I, I can't even imagine. I can't even fathom. Most of us can't fathom what that feels like to wake up as a child and have to carry a freaking automatic weapon, you know, twice the size as you to defend yourself and your family. You know, it's, it's disgusting what's going on over there in the Middle East and it's all about money and greed you know they're trying to commit genocide so they could steal that land for the oil and all of the riches just like they did with Africa and all of these other countries that are rich in resources you know like what they're doing in Haiti right now you know I've, I've also been hearing you know rumblings of you know even in North Carolina there is lithium appearing apparently so you know it's it's really criminal what's going on and this just really looks a lot it looks very similar to what took place in hawaii we haven't heard a peep since that like what what is what what repairs have they done what did they do what was the resolve um all i remember is oprah a billionaire and rock you know begging american citizens for money to support these, um, you know, these countries that were damaged uh, from the fires and the flooding. And the same thing just happened with Biden saying, we got to lean on the people. But you're sending trillions of dollars to these foreign countries to fund war, to fund genocide. And, and you're telling us, and we're, uh, we're already struggling to make ends meet, you know what I'm saying? But you're telling us that we have to support, it's, it's ridiculous, and I'm just, I'm, bla I'm flabbergasted. At this point in the game, I, I am, I'm not, I'm like so, like in the middle, like I'm literally leaning towards a completely different party, not them, not Republican, but like the Green Party, because they, their policies to me, are what I align with. I don't align with genocide. I don't align with, you know, robbing people of their resources. I don't align with, you know, just going in and indoctrinating people with your own agendas. You know, going into continents and countries, telling them, you know, how they should think or how they should do things. Um, can you even imagine, like, what America would do if somebody just came over here with 40,000 troops and just, you know, stamped the flag and said, hey, we're going to be here uh, whether you like it or not. And we're going to just observe and make sure everything like who, who the f do you think you are? You know, the audacity, you know, it's it's just really disgusting, um, you know, at this point in the game. So I, I just try to protect my energy. I, I, I really encourage you all to do the same. Um, I feel anybody watching the news is, is batshit crazy because all I see is propaganda, propaganda, propaganda. All I see is lies. And now you got Hillary Clinton, who looks like a freaking witch, telling people that, you know, you know, t trying to go to Congress to strip us of our First Amendment rights. They They've been slowly stripping us away from that uh, by, you know, censorship and all of these different things, shutting down people's channels. If they say certain words, they now have AI that works 24 seven um, that could just flag channels that are just speaking on real topics. And it makes you wonder, like, why are you trying so hard to silence people? Because they don't want the truth out. And I've learned just from my 50 years of being here, like, you know, whenever you're trying so hard to silence someone, there obviously is some truth in what they're saying. And so what I see, I am not a Trump supporter. I am not any, like, I am not a, you know, a right winger or whatever you call it, but it's just like, I'm like, why do you work it so hard to, to silence this man? And then when I listen to some of the talking points, you know, and I see some of the evidence and I see how they're kind of changing up, you know, some of the videos and, and only showing peace, like, you know, sound bites of conversations to paint him in a picture. Um, I'm just like, wow, this is all, you know, this is all orchestrated. And then they do the same thing, you know, even with the Green Party, with, with uh, Jill Stein. They're trying to make her out to be some Russian spy. It's just disgusting. And this is all coming from, you know, uh, you know the so-called uh, liberals the, or the whatever you call them, the, the, the um, conservatives. Not even conservatives. I think that is the Republicans. Who I don't even know because I don't I don't keep up with this ish. It's it's just annoying at the end of the day because they are not who you want to listen to because they've gotten us in this freaking. 
pickle in the first place. It's like none of these people know what the hell they're talking about. If you sit and just listen to them, you know, you see that all they're doing is gaslighting people. They're gaslighting you. That's all they do. And that's all they're good at is lying and gaslighting. And it's just disgusting what's going on. I can't even watch a full interview of the presidential elect that everybody is gushing over. I'm sorry. I just don't see it. Like I said, I will not be um, voting in the same way. I just feel like when you keep doing things the same way over and over and over, you're going to get the same result. And it's the very definition of crazy. And that's all people have been voting is the same two parties in office every single time instead of looking at some of these other um, parties and what they have to offer and what their policies may be. Um, we've yet to hear what anyone's policies are other than their allegiance to Israel who is currently committing genocide. Um, you know, so I, I just, I don't know. I'm just really in a space right now where I'm just protecting my peace. And, you know, I would advise you all to do so. Um, Diddy is a distraction. They knew Diddy was doing what he was doing all these years. In fact, some of their asses was at the party, you know, but now because they want to distract us, they just threw his ass out there to just dis distract and have us discussing nonsensical topics um, so that they can, you know, do what they've been doing behind the scenes. But this is a year of karma. Karmic debts are going to be paid. Karmic retributions are going to be paid. And this is what we are seeing right now. And Mother Gaia, Daughter Earth is not having it. So she is cleansing. There's a cleansing going on. There's a reset going on. And I just really feel like, you know, everything that needs to be exposed is being exposed. And I'm just not for anyone uh, feeling like they're in at liberty to tell people what they can say like who the hell are you Hillary Clinton to be telling people what they can discuss and how to think because that's all the news does is it programs you hence the term television programming you're being programmed 24 7 and you're literally plugged into the matrix when you turn that ish on and people that are plugged in don't realize it the people on the outside look crazy to the people who are plugged in and vice versa you can't even have a conversation without it blowing up into an uh, argument or people you know people cannot stand on two opposing sides um and just agree to disagree or to you know kind of point out what their differences are and you know just have that mutual respect now it's a smear campaign it's i'm gonna cancel you and what people don't realize is they are putting batteries in our backs we the people to cancel out each other which means ultimately they can eliminate that first amendment of freedom of speech the more you sit out here and do that um you know, the more, you, you know, the more you so-called cancel people or try to smear campaign other individuals, you are feeding into that narrative. Like you're contributing to, you know, them shutting things down, to th them shutting us down and them, you know, blocking our ability to communicate honestly and openly. We should be truth seekers and truth speakers. We should not be con you know, just conforming to things because that's the way it's always been or that's the way, you know, this person did it in the family or that person. You should always be evolving with the times and things change, you know. Maybe it was more suitable for individuals to vote a certain way back in the days, but now you have to use your own, you know, free will and you have to use your intuition and you have to pay attention to what's going on. Look at the, the things behind the scenes. Like, don't just look at what the news presents pull up the story from other sources to see if the stories are matching i listen to a lot of grassroots you know journalists people that are on other sides of the world because they have a fresh perspective when you are in it you don't know just how sick it has become and so a lot of these other journalists, you know, from England and Africa, um, even um, journalists from, you know, some of the um, Arab countries, I listen to these people's uh, talking points. And, you know, what they're seeing is, you know, it's the, the it's the fall of this country. Like it's it's literally the fall of this country. You got homegirls sitting here drinking brews while people are struggling, like people are literally suffering. You know, there's folks that are still missing. You know, she drinking brews on on a nighttime talk show. You know what I'm saying? It, it's disgusting. Like it's it's a farce. Like at the end of the game, I can't even take it seriously because it's just like you. This can't be real life. It can't be real life. But you know, I digress. Let's get into the reading, beloveds. I just had to go into that diatribe just to kind of you know catch you up to where I've been. Um, you know, because it's it's just been a lot going on. Uh, I I just see a whole lot of. 
shucking and jiving going on, if that's what you want to call it. I just feel like people are playing in our faces, um, and I don't take that kindly. You know, when things don't add up, the math ain't mathing. So you're being lied to. You know, you're being lied to. These fools done, they, they, <laughs> I, uh, hold on. These fools done said they only have $750 to allocate to people who lost everything in Hurricane Helene. Are you serious? But you send in trillions, you send in millions, hundreds of millions, billions rather, to other, like, what? And you got 750 for the people who live here? Like, the people that live here in this country, that's all you could allocate to them. But you can send trillions. I, I'm, I'm confused. That's why I'm like, yo, this whole ish, the matrix, is it's not for me. It's not for me. I'm going to keep on minding my business. I'm going to keep on living my best life. I'm going to keep on staying in my bubble. And whatever is to come, it shall come. And I will be in peace. I will not be in some, like confused state because a lot of people you know unfortunately are being duped and rocked to sleep with this whole election it's like literally i feel like this is you know the pandemic 2.0 you know what i'm saying like this or you know it, it's just like this is another trick it's, it's like another trick bag you know in my opinion and so that's why i said i'm i'm not participating with either one i'm not associating with any of that I'm going to associate with the people, planet, and uh, people. It's, it's people, p uh, planet, and peace. That is the Green Party's slogan, and that's what I rock with because I am all about the planet. I'm all about peace, and I'm all about my people, whether you white, red, yellow, grain, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Black, melanated, whatever you, call, whatever you associate yourself with. Those are my folks. You know what I'm saying? It is a spiritual, you know, um, warfare that's going on right here. And that's why you got to stay prayed up. You got to stay protected because I'm telling you, it's like the case of the body snatchers. People that I, you know, a couple of years ago before this whole pandemic, it was like we were on the same page. And it's like after that and people who chose to do certain things with their body because they were being told to do so, they are not the same. They, they are thinking differently. And I'm not saying everyone. I feel like some folks, you know, have have kind of awakened um, to the truth. But a lot of folks, you know, it's just like they are not the same. Like we lost a lot of people um, and not, you know, not through an actual physical death like we just lost them because they are no longer the same individuals they don't have those same um values that they once had you know i just find it very in interesting how people could be so trusting of a gov government that has repeatedly lied to us and it's been proven you know repeatedly you know um melanated people in this country we have been through hell and back hell and high water like there's there's literal doc you can look it up you can pull up a video right now and and just look at some of the civil rights movements or every leader that we've had has been assassinated um uh, but yet you have melanated people who are still trusting of this this government and trusting of these you know I, I just call them talking heads, and, and, and these are people who have been put in positions to rock us to sleep and keep us sleepwalking. Most of these folks are uh, FBI informants, and they are working for the, you know, for the government, and we think that they are going to lead us to salvation and freedom, and that's what you, that's why you can't, you know, um, just submit your will to people because they look like you and, you know, they can jive talk. You know, I'm talking, I'm talking old school now. You know, it, it, it's jive. That's what they used to call jive back in the days. Like you jive turkey, like you literally playing in people's faces. Oh, I could play basketball. Oh, I play the, I play the, the, the trumpet or the saxophone. Oh, I'm, I'm drinking blues on TV. It's, I'm doing the nay nay or the stupid ass dancing. Like that ish is insulting, beloved. Like to intelligent people who see this mockery, it's literally a mockery of black people, you know, because they think that's all they got to do to get your vote. They ain't got to talk no policies. They ain't got to change ish. They can just sit there in your face and look, look what I can do. <laughs> you know, see, I'm drinking a 40 with you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's ridiculous. I can say it. Come girl, you know, in these streets, like it's annoying. It's, it's, it's insulting. And so at this point in the game, I'm just like, yo, y'all can have that. If that's what you see as, as a change that's going to bring, you know, a change to this, this country for the better, I, I, I feel, I, I'm like, I'm out of here. <laughs> this is going to be deuces. I'm about to move somewhere in the middle of the Amazon in a minute because this ish right here, y'all can have it. Y'all can literally have it. Every time 
black people vote with emotion or, or they see somebody that they think look like them, you know, oh, well, they black, so they got to be for us. That's a farce, beloved. You know what I'm talking about? You got a lot of sellouts and you got a lot of folks out here that are not for you. Just because they skin folk, don't make them kin folk. So you got to be very mindful of who and what you are aligning yourself with because you're going to be the one that's going to have to answer to that, you know? And so that's why I always tell folks like, you know, just make sure your thoughts are your thoughts and that you're not just sitting around listening to ish all day and you know you ain't do no type of research on your own to see if that's something that you really um align with because a lot of people i know they just voting you know the way they're voting because hey that's the way we always vote my whole family do that so that's what we're gonna do my um, i i suggest look vote for policy and not pigmentation or personality period you know what i'm talking about this is not a personality game we are not here trying to see who's cooler and who's down and who can cook a mean pot of greens and who is you know like nah we here to see who is going to change this it ish for the better you know what i'm saying who's going to change this for the better because we are currently seeing devastation now and Look how they're responding to that. So what do you think is going to happen in the next four years? This issue is happening on their clock right now, right before an election. And they allocated $750 to hurricane victims who have lost everything. $750 ain't covering nobody's rent in 2024, beloved. You could barely get groceries for the month for $750. You can't pay all of your utilities. Your damn phone bill, the light bill, and all that is more than $750. So this right here is a smack in the face. And we have to wake the up because they are showing you who they are. They're showing you literally that we ain't going to do ish. We're going to sit in your face, tell you we're going to do X, Y, and Z like they do every freaking election and nothing changes. It gets worse. We get taxed out the ass. Prices go up. We get no money. We don't get no increase, but everybody else, all the corporations get all types of tax breaks. They get all types of money allocated to them. We get nothing. We the people. So I digress. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to get that off my chest, beloved. So let me take a deep breath, beloved. Let me get that energy off of me. I call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether, and spirit. Ah, Shay. I ask our beautiful angels, archangels, ancestors, ascended masters, spirit guides, deities, animal totems, earth, mother Gaia, universe, source, the divine, most high God, our creator to shine a powerful, powerful message of love and of light. I call personally upon Baba Obatala, Mama Oya, and Baba Ogun to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. Help me to pick up on the energy, number, synchronicity, and vibrations of my cards. And so it is. So mote it be. Ashe, 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 yo, oh, beautiful soul. So we did see that 347 earlier, which was 77. The 77 in the numerology deck, which is what we will start the reading with, is spirituality. So I do feel a strong sense of you all going through some sort of like rites of passage or maybe going through some sort of initiation. Um, and you had to learn uh, from some of these trials, some of these tribulations, and it has matured you. It's evolved you. It's evolved your way of thinking. You know, um, the 14 that the seven, seven breaks down to is temperance. So I do feel like, you know, it required a lot of patience, uh, as you were navigating those circumstances. I feel that there was a lot that you had to learn. Um, and you could have been sitting at the feet of an elder. Maybe you were seeking advice or you could have been going to and matriarch, a patriarch in your family, or maybe you was doing your own studying. Uh, maybe you you're in classes. It's a scholarly energy where you're looking um, for answers or you're, you know, just kind of like investigating different schools of thought. Uh, but you mature and you level up and it does lead to some spiritual awakening as well. Um, it's really uh, that energy of like, you know, sharpening your sword or honing a particular skill as well so whatever it is you're learning this is something that you uh i feel you have like a deep love um deep passion for it could be you know you expressing yourself artistically or creatively in some way shape form or fashion or maybe there is something that you do where you are communicating um you know and um 
you know, kind of like expressing uh, yourself maybe through a podcast. Uh, maybe you have your own platform on YouTube or whatever it is you're utilizing your throat chakra because that 14 breaks down to five, which is the throat chakra card. It also um, is associated with that hierophant, which is why I was getting a feeling of like, you know, just scholarly energy, tutelage, like researching, studying, um, just kind of going through different schools of thought even, um, but also building up that spiritual um, essence spiritual knowledge, that spiritual sense. Uh, so the time on the clock right now is, can you do what I want you to do? It's 413. And remember, we did see 444. So this 44, that breaks down to eight, which is the strength card. So I do feel like you are now owning your power. You're in your power. You're very strong. I just get a strong sense of like resilience and you persevering through some really arduous times, arduous battles um but you've had to kind of navigate that tough terrain in order to build you know that strength in order to now be able to you know kind of learn to find that balance within yourself um you may have learned whoever angers you controls you um and so that was something that you also had to kind of navigate or um you had to con you know try to control that or uh, contain um, that that anger or frustration that you may have been feeling in the past. And this led you to, you know, kind of like accepting um, yourself, all of you, you know, like, you know, accepting that you are a unique being uh, and, and turning those once, you know, vulnerabilities into a superpower. So whatever those underlying vulnerabilities were, whether it was associated with your self-esteem or the lack of self-love or whatever it is, it's like now you've kind of evolved your way of thinking and this shows maturation. So that four and four, that reduces the eight. We're in an eight universal year. So I do feel um, just from those lessons you've learned, maybe through heartache, I feel there was a recovery period. Whoever you're attracting to you could also be in that energy um, as well where there's this openness to love, this receptivity to love. Um, um, and I feel like this is coming because it is your just due, like you're getting your just due or you're getting a wish fulfillment, a blessing is coming through because you've earned it. So whatever seeds that you may have sowed in the past, it is now harvesting because the eight is the infinity symbol, which really speaks to what goes around. It comes back around again. When you turn that eight sideways, it's the infinity symbol. So it really just shows your efforts and you will get, um, you know, your karmic due, you know, you will have karma karmic debts paid, um, whether in good faith or bad. So that's what I was saying earlier with, you know, this being an eight universal year, this is the year that karmic debts will be paid off. And I just feel like many of you Scorpios who have been really working on the self and really healing at that soul level and really just getting rid of and, 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 you know, releasing things that don't serve you, um, you know, and just kind of ha going through that transformation or that death of the old version of you, there is that, you know, that's the reason why there's these rewards. Uh, when I think of eight, I also think of the star um, where there are blessings coming in that you may not even know is coming. You know, there's blessings, there's rewards, there's wish fulfillment. Okay, my love. My daughter just got that. You know, so we're going to see what the cards have to say. That's just what I'm picking up intuitively. Um, so the song that we have playing on the playlist. Ooh, let me shut this down before I get a strizzyk. And so we have um, Layla Hathaway, and this is called Let Go. And so, yeah, you had to let go a lot of things that may not have been serving you uh, in the past. Like I said, cutting yourself free from people, places, things. It was just 333 on the clock because it was 3321. So your angels, that three is associated with like the ascended masters, but it also is associated with the solar plexus. So trusting your gumption, the stomach is like a second brain. So you trusted your gumption or you listened to your intuition. You listened to how your spirit felt. What was sitting right or feeling right in your spirit is what you was led to to do. The three also represents that empress or that divine feminine. If you're masculine, that divine um, masculine energy. And so that just shows that level of self-mastery that you reached once you were able to let go of things that weren't serving you. Because when you're holding on to things from the past and trying to move forward, you're kind of just stuck and stagnant. You're like anchored. So it's like when you let it go, now you can move forward. And so I feel like that's the reason why a lot of... Um, a lot of you are now like experiencing some change because uh, that 413, like I said, that's eight. So I do feel like there's something moving, like a there's movement. There's some sort of action that you are going to be taking um, 
uh, shortly or some uh, you could be taking a trip or someone could be coming towards you I definitely feel like there's positive movements forward positive um, energy I also see like the eight of cups in my mind's eye because that eight of cups just speaks to like focusing on loving the self you know um, you were pouring into yourself after experiencing a lot of you know confusion in your former circumstances whether you know it be a love ship a friendship uh, you know a partnership whatever those ships were if it was wasn't serving you or feeding and nurturing you. I feel like you parted ways. You let it go. Um, someone's name could be Layla or Hathaway, first, middle, or last. Um, and what's interesting, it says, first time seeing the song, February 12, 2024. That's my son's solar return. So some of you may have a son um, who's born on the 12th um, or the 2nd. Uh, maybe you just had a baby February 12th or maybe you just had a child um, But I, that's very interesting. Maybe you had a son, you know, so that's very beautiful. Okay, so let's tap in So let's see what the cards have to say beloved. Hold on one moment. Let me close my door. All right. Thank y'all Okay, so let's see what we got on the bottom of the deck. Look at this seven seven spirituality and remember we saw that um, 347 I believe it was um, in the beginning of the reading and it was seven seven when I started the reading and I was like oh this that's the you know the seven seven is the spirituality card and I went into that whole diatribe of breaking down you know the seven seven so this really speaks to your personal growth um, many of you are psychics many of you are definitely um, you know channelers or healers shamans light workers um, every great healer has to first heal themselves so I do feel like there was a lot of lessons because this seven seven that does break down to 14 so this was divine timing so whatever you were experiencing it was all a matter of divine timing was all written in the stars and I feel like you're aligning with your soul you know your soul tribe your family like the people that are on the same frequency I also get a sense of you like seeing through the illusion as I was saying earlier like you are such um, you know you are so strong spiritually or so strong intuitively or psychically or clairvoyantly that you are able to you know, to see through the lies, the deception, the technology, maybe such as myself, like, you know, I could see through the illusions that, you know, a lot of these um, journalists and these news stations are just kind of like sitting up and, and just playing games, you know, so maybe you're someone who is really using your first eye to see. The seven is associated with the crown, so pay attention to your dreams, pay attention to any downloads you may receive, upgrades, any sensations you might have in your in your uh, cerebral um you know, um, you know, hemisphere in your brain, I should say, uh, just pay attention because that, that everything is for a reason. Nothing is for not. So it's like, you know, pay attention to what you're feeling. Um, I also get a strong sense with that 14 breaking down to five that some of you all could be having messages, you know, coming through telepathically or intuitively. And so that's another reason why you need to listen to your intuition. Um, there's definitely some sort of strong dream activity, or maybe there's astral traveling taking place, but I feel your in alignment with someone made in your likeness um, and there could be someone that could be communicating that you haven't heard from in a while or this could be someone who uh, could be rushing towards you because I'm also seeing like the chariot and I'm hearing victories I'm hearing success I'm hearing things are you know going to be you know triumphant for you like you're going to really be in a celebratory mode um, we have D'Angelo Jones in my bones so for some of you as I said this could be like you could be getting a um, you know a message from someone and this is someone who may reveal that they are feeling you um, I just wanted to see what was underneath it because it was so bright and it's the three so that's the Empress so someone has um, you know some sort of strong attraction they feel very intrigued or very uh, magnetically drawn to you um, and this is a very strong connection they see you as a wish fulfillment or some ideal mate you know they could see themselves with you see themselves building a family building a unit um, a partnership um, but this is someone that's definitely looking at you as like you know a soulmate a twin flame a cosmic companion on the split we have the six I can't make it up that's the love card so when you think of the love the lovers you know in traditional tarot is overseen by that angelic figure and with the seven seven spirituality this 
again shows that there is some sort of like yin yang, some chemistry, some synergy between the two of you because this five and the six reduces to 11 and that 11 is one half of the 11, 11, which is the twin flame number. So I do feel like someone, some of you all might be proposed to because this person obviously has it out for you. Someone could be from Virginia, like not have it out for you, but they have it um, have the hops for you is what I was hearing in my mind's eye. Um, someone's name could be D'Angelo. Okay, I was showing you something different. Let me get you back there. So D'Angelo. So someone could be from um, from VA. Uh, someone could be, you know, kind of brown skin. Maybe some of you are tanned, you know. Um, I'm hearing tall, dark, and handsome even, you know. So uh, with Jones in my bones, someone's definitely got it. Got the hots for you, beloved. So let's tap in and see. You may see a lot of synchronicities, whether it's 888-777. Maybe you're seeing 111-555-666 um, because this 87 breaks down to 15. 15 breaks down to 6. So you could be seeing all of the aforementioned numbers. You may also be seeing 444, 333 because we also saw that. And maybe 1111 is also another number. But this right here is showing that if you are seeing a lot of synchronicities, that could be spirit nudging you um, and grab, you know, grabbing your attention to look at things from a different perspective or letting you know that something is about to change or maybe this communication that's coming in. I feel whoever this is, I'm getting strong synergy. I'm getting strong synergy between you and this person, chemistry between you and this person. I feel this like, you know, this strong passion. Um, you know, someone is really desiring another individual and I see individuality here. So you could be very, um, you know, independent at the moment, single, enjoying your singlehood because that has, you know, really kind of given you a sense of independence and freedom and you've been able to rebuild on your own, which is what you may have needed to strengthen yourself. Um, with this 48 financial discipline, I do feel that you are working on your finances, maybe your credit, maybe you're stashing some money, maybe you're saving to purchase a home. Uh, but I do see that you're being more frugal um, nowadays because you're really mindful of, you know, what you are circulating your money on and utilizing your money for. Um, I see this wish fulfillment is coming true. Uh, someone is following their dreams. So they're putting themselves first or prioritizing whatever it is that they want. You know, so this goal um, that someone may have or this ambition or maybe this is just some la uh, some lost, um, you know, um, you know how you have a hobby that you really enjoy, but then life starts lifing and then you kind of stop participating in that. And I feel someone is going back to, you know, what makes them feel good and alive and invigorated with this 85 transformation. I feel like this is going to transform something in your life or you're going to realize um, just how much you love this by doing it again. It's just really going to take over. And I feel like it's going to really uh, bring about some sort of um abundance like you're going to see some sort of results because I saw financial discipline so maybe you are you know kind of like slowly but surely like getting certain materials that you may need to participate in whatever this hobby or whatever this dream is and you know as you participate in it as you um, engage in that preferred activity you're starting to realize like wow I love this I miss this I can't believe you know I stopped doing this and whatever that is you know it's going to lead to some level of success this financial discipline is here and this is 12 this is making me feel like the three of pentacles i always liken this number to the three of pentacles so i do get a strong sense of like whatever you've been mastering is going to definitely garner some sort of like um abundance a windfall even for some of you all and i hear rain so it's going to be raining <laughs> dollars on you we got swv rain some of you could be from the bronx brooklyn um the Bronx or Brooklyn with SWV, the rain. So you could be also attracting like a water sign as well. I definitely feel like because I was hearing, made it, let it rain, make it rain, make it rain. So them dollars are going to be pouring in from whatever that is that you participate. Whatever you're doing, I should say. Whatever that skill is that you've been honing. You know, whatever you've been mastering your craft. Whatever, you know, whatever the, um, whatever it is that you've been doing. It's like, I feel like you're going to. Um, see, you know, you're going to reap the rewards. You're going to reap the fruit of your labor, you know. So Divine Spirit, we're going to cut this deck. Thank you, Spirit. Cut the deck. And I always cut it until I hear, you know, now is the time. And I'm hearing after this one, we can 
go ahead and get the card on the bottom of the deck overall energy 11 individuality so many of you as you saw with let let go uh with layla hathaway that's what you all did you let go of those codependent relationships toxic relationships you even let go of you know that lack mentality thinking you weren't good enough or thinking you didn't have the um ability to do something alone you know and this only led to your self-determination self-advocacy and ultimately your freedom you know because your individuality is the foundation for your happiness and your peace and your peace of mind so this individuality is where you are four 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 your angels have been giving you you know those little nudges they've been the ones kind of pushing you you know telling you to take the leap of faith and i feel because this is 11 you're now getting your just due because you trusted you walked in faith and not by sight and so now you're going to receive some sort of blessing or some sort of um positive news i feel if you were stuck at a fork in the road in terms of which decision or which which you know path to take i feel like you will make the right decision because this too uh, is giving me like the two of wands. So if you were kind of contemplating or in um, a meditative state, I feel like you have come to some sort of conclusion and you're going to take action in the direction that you feel is going to be best for you. So you're choosing wisely and you're choosing for yourself first and foremost. So you are now uh, prioritizing you in this sense. So you've learned from a codependent relationship that could have been very toxic. It could have been emotionally codependent or financially codependent, whatever it was, um, as you walked away from that and let it go I feel like that was what ultimately led to you being more trusting of your own intuition and using your discernment because that 11 breaks down to two which is associated also with the high priest high priestess and they are very intuitive and they are te you know they kind of teeter between the spirit realm and the earthly realm and so you have this access to ancient knowledge and wisdom uh, but you also are aware of what's hidden and that's just from experience you you know, when you think of the number 10, that represents endings, you know, that denotes, you know, endings, sudden endings, um, even painful endings, losses, uh, but every ending denotes a new beginning. And so 11 is the next number uh, after that 10. So I do feel like now it's more of a decision that you're making of which course to take, which action to make, um, you know, or what action to make and which course to take. Um, so this is powerful energy. So bottom of the deck, we have the 41 self-discipline and we are about to pull a card for who or what you're attracting to you. We still have rain playing and rain is a water element. Water represents, you know, emotional intelligence. It represents healing, um, a cleansing even. Um, it represents love, you know. So you could, you know, have someone that is coming in that's very disciplined. This is someone who is fully in control of their own autonomy. Um, this is someone who is disciplined. 41 breaks down to five, the hierophant. So this is someone who's listened, um, you know, and learned, you know, someone who has gone through some sort of growing pain and has learned from the experiences, has opened up their heart chakra. Um, we have a uh, groove theory and this is keep trying. So someone who's very resilient as well, because whatever they've experienced in the past, um, this is what has led to them becoming more disciplined uh, is experience. You know, experience will be the greatest teacher. And I feel like this is someone who doesn't shy, you know, from, you know, correction or even being chastised. Like this is someone who is um, very open to correction. And that's a mature person uh, when you don't deflect and, 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 and project onto other people your insecurities, but instead kind of, you know, take that that constructive criticism and see if anything is applicable and work on those things. So that self-discipline is someone who is, you know, it's all encompassing of self-love, self-worth, self-value. Um, but this is also a very disciplined person, someone very spiritually uh, strong as well, very spiritually astute. You could have gone through some sort of spiritual awakening. So who or what you're attracting to you is someone very, very poised. You know, I'm hearing poised. I'm hearing um, someone who has self-control. Uh, and with keep trying, this is someone very, resilient someone who has persevered through a lot uh someone could be from jersey thank you spirit let me get all right so let's tap in so who or what is our beloved scorpios attracting to them let me get a message of peace power and protection my beautiful spirit thank you so much someone's name could be amel 
And so we have 10 on the bottom of the deck. Today is 1010. 10, so this is powerful to see because as I said, you know, going through those karmic endings, karmic losses and karmic completions and that showing up is just confirmation that you are breaking through uh, from some sort of uh, karmic cycle. And now you're coming into a new cycle, um, which you are on the precipice of, you know, and it's because you kept trying. You didn't give up. Uh, you didn't just, you know give in even and so what we have for who or what you're attracting to you we have nine nine compassion and so when you show compassion to others that's not judging um that's also showing humility that's being very forgiving uh someone could absolutely uh, desire your forgiveness because maybe they feel you're guarded or you could be a little you know stand offish nine nine reduces to 18 so this could be someone that's kind of hidden or watching you from a behind the scenes someone you haven't heard from in a while we have two double numbers whenever I see double numbers I always feel like that's someone mirroring you so when I see this 11 individuality I do feel two people had to first heal themselves remember we had rain playing when this card came out and the rain is that water element and water um, when I think of the one, I'm thinking of the ace of cups. So this is really about healing thyself internally. Love is an inside job. So you do have to do a lot of internal work, heal at a soul level, so that when it is time to exchange uh, that cup of love, you have a full cup of love. You're not exchanging, uh, you know, an empty cup. So this is powerful because it shows, you know, the work on the self, the healing. Um, it shows that you've rejuvenated your spirit and recharged your batteries in some sense. And with this 18, you know, you may have someone who is secretly or privately watching you unbeknownst to you, or maybe you do know intuitively because you are very psychic, but someone has had, you know, this, this compassion. Um, someone has this compassion or, you know, they have a lot of compassion for you or they're seeking your compassion. Uh, this could also be a message from spirit saying to show compassion uh, to someone who may be coming towards you. The 18 does break down to nine and the nine does show me like the nine of cups. That's someone I always feel like that's like the nine of cups, the me, myself and I card, the de la soul energy where you're just focusing on you, prioritizing you because you've had that period where you were in codependent relationships over, you know, compromising over, you know, um, you know, just overly doing it, you know, self-sabotaging to some degree. And now it's like you're taking that moment to prioritize you. Um, and in doing so, this is making others appreciate you more um, so what we have is more than love the Ohio players some of you all could be Ohio I'm here in Dayton Ohio um, some of you all could be you know born in the year 1977 because that 7 7 breaks down to 14 that's 5 plus that 1 is 6 anything going into 9 is always that number so a lot of people always you know they they question like how are you getting these numbers I never um, I never count the 9 I only count the numbers around the nine because any of those numbers going into that number is always going to be that number. So that that 14, that's five plus that one, that's six. So the six that you're getting um, is definitely someone who may feel that you are like the yin to their yang because the six is associated with the lovers. This could also be someone from the past, whether a past person in this lifetime or a former. Um, so I do feel like, you know, a lot of you also are very gifted in tapping into like your Akashic records. So whoever this person may be um, could very well be like a past life, um, you know, individual because we did see the spirituality. So this could be some sort of soul tie you have with this individual. We got the four perseverance here. So how they feel about you is their heart chakra is open. Um, the four deals with the heart chakra. It's also the divine masculine. So some of you feminines may have a masculine coming towards you or some of you masculines may realize you have a lot of love and compassion for someone else. And with the song more than love playing it's more than love so it's not just that you love this person but maybe the fact that you know you enjoy being around them maybe you enjoy the chemistry that you share with this person or how stimulating the conversation can be um maybe you just enjoy um the fact that this person is independent self-sufficient self-reliant um maybe you're appreciating them more because you haven't been in comfort uh, you know contact with this individual because not only does this nine um give me like the nine of um cups the me myself and i you know de la soul energy but it also also could be the nine of wands where you are very guarded where you have established boundaries or you have these barriers up these walls up and someone is hoping um, that you will show them compassion if they you know come towards you or if they initiate some sort of contact or communication we have four and eleven here which breaks down to six 
and then we got the nine nine so remember what i just said anything going into this number is always going to be that number so with this six again that's the lovers and remember these cards here also I mean, this number here, 1977, someone could have been born in the year 1977. Also, you know, someone could be a life path six or someone could be, um, yeah, I'm getting a life path six. But there's more than love. You know, someone could also play um, an instrument. I believe this is like a trumpet or of some sort that she's playing. Someone is definitely like attracted to you sexually. Um, it's like they're like um, it's like they're mesmerized. They they have this passion, this desire. It's like they just want you to take control. Even you know this is someone that just wants you to like take control. You know, like they just want to like just let you have have your way with them or something to that degree. So let's tap it. So um, how does this person who are what I beloved Scorpios are attracting to them feel about them? Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection, my beautiful Scorpios. So all of those cards we're going to keep. And we got another card. See how that's turned. And we're going to take that as well. Bottom of the deck, we have the three. Oh, 33. So that 33 communication. So there is some communication telepathically or someone has this epiphany or this aha. You know, there's like this, um, you know, this truth that comes to light or someone is illuminated to the truth. Um, and this is the three, double threes. The three deals with the solar plexus. So maybe someone is mustering up the strength, courage, and wise dome uh, because they see that they're, you know, approaching an empress. They're approaching an emperor, a goddess, a god. So they have to get their, you know, they have to get their talking points um, together. They have to come to you correct they gotta they gotta come correct you know and so this energy of communication they could be really trying to um you know kind of rehearse what they're going to say how they're going to say it um they could be kind of like playing out you know the scenario in their mind of you know a conversation that they're having with you and maybe they're thinking of something from the past i do feel this is someone from the past as well i feel like there's going to be you know because this is the card that's on the bottom of the deck when we pull how they feel about you uh i mean what's hidden in the energy part of me and so I do feel like there could be some messages being sent telepathically or intuitively or just the mere fact that someone is thinking of another person or they've rent space in this person's mind that you're starting to now pick up or you're starting to think of that person. So whatever this is, this person from the past is perhaps taking action to come toward you. I do feel like there can be some sort of breakthrough with communication um, if everyone is honest because this all yellow card just speaks to illumination. Like you're going to be learning some things that you may not have been you know, privy to or this person may reveal some things, confess some things. Um, they may be honest. They may ask for your forgiveness. They may be very transparent. There's not going to be any deflecting or you know projecting during the conversation and it's because this person is realizing yet again um that they you know they they have more than love for you um they realize that they respect you they realize that they appreciate you they value you um they realize the chemistry they realize the synergy perhaps um so the cards that flew off of how they feel about you is we have rebirth so they've watched your transformation because i was picking up the fact that someone was watching from a distance um someone was kind of like you know kind of learning um watching you in learning taking notes you know almost uh but they've watched you transform you've evolved the 16 reduces to seven so that 16 is like the tower so there was a death there was an ending or something was destroyed because the tower is when spirit has to step in because you're not paying attention to the red flags, you know, and you just keep on going along to get along. And that's what the very definition of codependency looks like. And so that's why, you know, you had to let go of codependent relationships so that you could build your own autonomy and capacity to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, and ultimately, you know, secure in your own being. So this transformation was very enlightening. Um, and they also see you as someone enlightened and also wise, very spiritual, um, uh, and so there could be a lot of thoughts of you, a lot of messages um, that they could be sending to you, as I said, intuitively. I also get a strong sense of them seeing um, you kind of like having some sort of victories, having some major changes and transformations in your life or going through some sort of startling metamorphosis or rites of passage. And this has only taught them because you could be the student and the teacher at the same time because you never know who's watching or who's observing and someone is absolutely observing you. The next card we have is karmic completion. So this is why you're going through this 
you know, transformation is because you've wrapped up a karmic cycle, which is what we were saying earlier. And today is 1010. So this is really just a beautiful energy of now, you know, coming something coming full circle or there being this turning point or now you can turn the page and there is this, you know, this brand new start, this fresh start. We have the three uh, creativity. So you are someone that someone can really look at you and see like a goddess, a god. Um, they see beauty. They see strength. They see, you know, wise dome. Uh, they see power. You know, they see a maternal or a paternal energy. Um, they see someone who is a master manifester, someone who births life. You know, you could be very nurturing and loving and caring and tender. Um, but you're also someone who doesn't, you know, you don't play. You know, you're, you're, you're someone who does you know play you don't take too kindly to anyone wasting your time or insulting your your intelligence either um, but you're strong nonetheless you're courageous you know they see you as strong and courageous um, but you don't do anything like they know you you can just feel energy perhaps um, they can sense that you know that you are very enlightened um, spiritually strong as well you know because I get spiritual strength but you also are very creative whatever you do I don't know I'm hearing some of you may bake um, you may you know go to you may be going to like cooking school and you could be going like learning baking because that's something you enjoy like baking those big beautiful cakes and um, you know, putting them on stencils and decorating them. And, you know, some of you could be doing that. But I'm also getting a sense of some of you um, just tapping into your creativity artistically or communicatively um, as well. Or um, even just art artistically or... Um, creatively like there's something you're doing where you're tapping into your creativity you know and this is just something that's very it's intriguing because it's like you know maybe you are kind of an example you know you're like this inspiration to this person that you know just go after what you want you know just just make it happen and we have Eric B and Rakim and this is called the ghetto so some of you definitely have come from some humble uh, beginnings, you know, and that's what the song was showing earlier um, when we have, you know, uh, Groove Theory singing. Um, what was that song again? Um, keep trying. Pardon me. You know, so, you know, you kept trying regardless of what your humble backgrounds may be. It's like you have aspired to be greater and you absolutely have accomplished just that. Regardless of what you've experienced, you've persevered. So another, the last card we have is relationship change 56. Remember we saw the 11 earlier because I was breaking down, you know, the um, numbers and I was saying that was one half of the 11, 11. So this person does see. Um, you know, you as someone that they can, you know, have that happily ever after with because this 11, to me, I'm hearing matrimony, I'm hearing marriage, I'm hearing commitment, I'm hearing someone that is definitely willing to propose or to make an honest woman or man out of you. This is one half of 11, 11. When you break the 11 down, that's two. So I'm seeing like the two of cups. So most of my Scorpios tuning and tapping in are single. So if you are single, that means that, you know, something is going to change with your status. Uh, you will not be single for much longer. Um, and if you are in a relationship, I feel like you won't be in that relationship much, much longer because maybe it is not nurturing you in the way that you want it to. Or maybe you don't feel like, you know, the other person is like really doing their part to cultivate a relationship or the connection or strengthen it, I should say. So, you know, that's what I'm picking up. Someone's name could be Eric or B, first, middle or last. Uh, someone could be from Long Island. Someone could also be from Brooklyn. Uh, we have the 33 still on the bottom of the deck. This is here for when we pull what's hidden. So, you know, definitely, you know, pay attention to your intuition. Your six is associated with the first eye. And that six love is showing up yet again. And the card that pulled out is 13 efforts. So I feel someone has changed, um, you know, perhaps their perspective. Someone has gone through some sort of startling metamorphosis. And now they are willing and ready to take action or to make some sort of effort or to rebuild because the 13 breaks down to four. And I feel it's because they are realizing yet again that they love you and that it's more than love as the Ohio players said. I was here in Dayton, Ohio um, earlier. Um, some of you could be from Ohio, um, Dayton, Ohio, or you could just be from Ohio. Um, you know, but this, this right here, this 13 
that is a, another um, example of transformation and rebirth because the 13 in traditional tarot is the death card. And that is your energy, Scorpio. So there is a death of the old. You know, there is a transformation, a startling metamorphosis and emerging someone new. And it's because you've made the effort. You put forth that energy and that intention to transform your circumstance or your um your situation. Um, when you look at this 13, uh, as I said, that breaks down to four. So that shows um, that even your heart, you know, even if you've experienced heartache and loss from either this lifetime or past pains, wounds, and traumas um, from your familial connections or past life connections, it's like you made the effort to do the work. The one associated with this 13 deals with the root chakra. So you had to work all the way from the root all the way up to the crown. And this shows the growth. This shows that level of um you know, discipline and drive and determination uh, to to transform and to change. And this is the reason why I feel like you're going to have victories and success. We have the six love here. So uh, when we pull the card for the outcome, the six love is here. So I'm hearing yin yang. I'm hearing past life. Um, you know, an angel oversees that union. So that's just showing me that this is someone that genuinely has a lot of love. And this is someone that could have gone through their own transformation as well. Uh, it could be a divine masculine, uh, cause that 13 does break down to four, four, which is the, uh, divine masculine. Um, but that's also the heart chakra. So that just confirms the love that they felt with 57. There goes the teaching and learning. What did I say about you can be the student and the teacher at the same time. So someone is obviously watching that 12 that the 57 breaks down to is the hangman. So this is a sacrificial position so that you could look at things from a different perspective. So you could be in a space where you are reexamining or reassessing or observing a situation. If this isn't you, this is someone else. And what they're discovering is that you are are, you know, a divine feminine or a divine masculine because that 12 breaks down to three. So they're seeing this transformation or they're seeing you in the light of someone who has reached that level of self mastery, who has tapped into their Christ consciousness or that God frequency, someone who is wise beyond their years. The card we have here is 81 leadership. So you are a boss, just as I said. So you have been teaching others. You've been inspiring others. Um, bosses lead, but they also um, you know, help to cultivate other leaders. Um, they don't feel, um, you know, um, threatened by helping another person. You know, this is that each one teach five type of energy. Someone who's always willing to help, always, you know, shows humility, someone very humble, but also a leader, a boss, nonetheless, someone taking the reins and doing things on their own you know, on their, with their own free will and in their own cognizance. Like this is someone that is definitely a powerhouse, you know. Um, this is that nine of pentacles energy as well, uh, where you have worked very hard to achieve everything that you have. Um, we have Jimi Hendrix right now, and this is called uh, Foxy Lady. So this makes you very attractive. Um, if you are a feminine energy, this person feels you're very foxy. This was in 1968. Um, so that is, what is that? That's 15, so that breaks down to 6. So, yeah, so that 1 and that 8 is 9 again. And then, like I said, anything going into 9 is always 6. So that's 6, that's the lovers we just saw. Remember the love card. And so, Foxy Lady, this is someone, pardon me, who feels that you're very attractive. We saw the Empress energy with that 3 uh, that I was breaking down earlier to 33. I was saying that was the energy of the Divine Feminine or the, the 3 creative Creativity card is also um, that divine feminine energy. So with Foxy Lady, you're beautiful, you're attractive, um, you're intriguing, you can be mesmerizing, wise, you just, you know, you just exude, you know, sexiness, you know, um, and you're also a boss, you know, so they've watched you kind of reach a level of self-mastery, self-sufficiency. Um, you could be, like I said, you know, independent now and, um, you know, self um, reliant, you know, doing your own thing. You've built from the ground up and it's all yours. Like you, uh, didn't receive any assistance, any help. This is something that you've done on your own, you know, and this makes you more attractive. So with the 57, 
teaching and learning. You are absolutely teaching those who are watching you. And someone's having an ego death. I feel a lot of you are going to be stepping into your um, soul's mission, your life's purpose or passion, uh, maybe even your person perhaps. But with the spiritual career, I definitely feel like you're going to be tapping into something that you absolutely love. Um, it's going to have to do with your crown, with cerebral energy, with channeling or scrying or psychic energy, um, clairvoyant energy, clairaudient energy even. But you're tapping into that first eye, um, you know, to to uh, really start uh, harnessing or utilizing um, those skills. But whatever you're doing, um, someone is watching. I also feel for some of you all, you could also be kind of observing things from a different perspective as well, um, getting a different you know, vantage point helps you uh, to see things um, in a new light, in a new way, in a new um, fashion or in a new um, in a new way. Let's just say that. So let's see what we have. Um, we're going to pull from the energy oracle deck next. So with Jimmy and Hendrick, someone's name could be um, Jimmy, first, middle or last. Uh, and we have, look at that. I was about to, I thought the book was still on there and it, I noticed. So you have carnucopia. So this is absolutely like a blessing coming from your angels, your guides. You can see this harvest. Remember what I said about the seeds you sow and look at the harvest that's here all from the hard work that you have done. So you have definitely um, planted some seeds in good faith and that's why you're receiving your just due because this is 11. And this 11 is showing that you are obtaining all of these blessings and these rewards and this door to personal healing and happiness because you're, uh, because you stood on your square. You know, you persevered beyond, you know, even your own imagination. <laughs> like, I feel like you didn't realize what you could do until you had to to do it um but that 11 yet again that just shows that you had to break free from those codependent connections in order to see what you were absolutely made of and this is why you're being rewarded carnucopia is that you know that blessing from spirit that's prosperity and abundance um you know that's you flourishing ultimately uh and it's all from your work your ethic uh and also the decisions that you made um you know choosing yourself you know, over another person and letting go of what was, you know, too, too heavy for you to carry. You know what I'm saying? You're not meant to go it alone. You're not meant to carry all the burdens. If you're in a partnership or a relationship, it is two people that has to pull their weight and really cultivate. And when you notice that that wasn't taking place, you said, I could do bad by myself, <laughs> you know, not even bad, but I could do good by myself. And that's what you pursued. That's what you set out to do. So that's powerful. So what we have now is crown royal so i feel like i said you know many of you like empresses emperors you know you're in that regal energy uh, with the crown reference, I definitely get a sense of you, you know, being someone who is seen as regal um, with royal. That also is saying that you are seen as someone very royal and regal. Um, you're seen as that empress, that divine feminine, divine masculine. Crown royal is also a liquor. So I, I'm here in celebrations as well. Some of you all could be celebrating. Your soul returns are coming up. So, you know, some of you all could be like having soul return parties. Maybe you're taking some trips. You know, you're taking a flight somewhere to enjoy, you know, your time. This is your time, you know, so that could also be something. But I just hear celebrations, you know, going to be around family and friends and loved ones. That's all you want. Divine spirit of peace, crown protection. Let me get a message from my beloved Scorpios. There's that card of walking away and there goes the blossoming abundance. When you walk away from something, the doors of opportunity and blessings can open up because maybe the connection in and of itself was holding back things, you know, because when you are wrapped up in something karmic, it blocks your blessings, beloved. You know, you, you, the blessings can't pour. The, you know, the blessings cannot come through when you're holding on to something um, and trying to move forward. Remember what I used, the analogy, where you're holding on to the past, but you're trying to move forward. You're going to be stuck, you know. So it's like you got to let that go so that you could take action. So you're walking away. You're making a decision. Remember what I said about you having some choice or decision. See that? Both of these cards is talking about leaving. You're on a journey here with the two. And remember, this is two. And this is 27. Nine. So nine is 
is the highest number of change. Nine is also the boundaries that you're establishing because I was seeing that nine of wands. But this also represents self-love, you know, prioritizing you, me, myself, and I, the nine of cups energy even. Um, that could also be the nine of swords where somebody, you're leaving somebody confused or you're leaving someone really frustrated, um, you know, anxious even. It's suffering from anxiety, stress. You know, um, overthinking things, ruminating and pining. If that's not you, that's someone else. So this card is literally like, you know, stuck. And look at this. This is attachments. So remember, you had to part ways from that connection that was keeping you stuck and stagnant. And you can see here, this was an attachment, a soul um, tie of some sort that you had to break free from. You can see she's chained and it's also a very dark and gloomy card. So this was a part of the challenge, you know, and with this seven that this five and this two breaks down to, I'm getting a sense of like whoever you were dealing with was like, you know, because I'm hearing the seven deadly sins in this deck. Um, it may be in this deck. It might be in the other one. I feel like there's an envy card that's associated with the number seven or it might be deceit. I'm not sure if it's in this deck or the other deck, but the seven in one of these decks is the deceit card and the deception and envy. Um, so this card right here, uh, these two cards together just shows that's why you had to get rid of that codependent uh, relationship because it was very burdensome. Um, and it was also one that you weren't even being your authentic self because um, you were wearing a mask and you realized that um, that, that connection was not... Um, it wasn't nurturing. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't stimulating. You didn't feel like you were in a safe space. You didn't feel appreciated. So you had to be honest. And look who's here helping you with that. You got Archangel Mikael. So Archangel Mikael helped you to cut you free from whatever was keeping you stuck and stagnant. So this Archangel is one that you may feel is your spiritual partner. I mean your spiritual parent. Pardon me. And this 35 reduces to 8. And remember we started the reading with 8. 413 um, when we started the reading. And that's his number. So that is the reason why. And 444 we saw during the reading or 4444 we saw during the reading and that is associated with the angels so you have uh, a lot of angelic protection you have guardian angels that watch over you that protect you um, and on the split they are the ones that encouraged and motivated uh, you to walk away from people places and things that were not serving you so let's tap in and see um, let's get another message for uh, the overall energy because that was a bonus message to kind of give some context and we see here 19 and this is the rest and rejuvenate card when we pull the card for who or what you're attracting to you so through this meditative state this is how you take action or this is how you will come to some sort of a conclusion because remember this is 10 and the tens always denote an ending so that 19 10 in the numerology deck, 91 is surrender. So I feel like this is you going through some spiritual cleanse, tapping into that Christ consciousness. As I said, there's a direct download or upgrade or transmission that you are receiving from your angels and your guides. And this is giving you that motivation and encouragement to walk away. Um, what we have playing right now is the emotions. If you think it, uh, you may as well do it. So that's what you started to do. You started to think about, you know, a new beginning because that 10 ending denotes a new beginning. So if you think it, you will do it, meaning you can manifest it just by setting the intention. So the card that flew out is eight in decision for who or what you're attracting to you. This is again stuck in the fork in the road, as I described earlier, needing to make a decision. And the eight is showing like the eight of swords where you're kind of ruminating and pining, um, overthinking things. And that is the reason why it's very necessary to take some time to get it right. That's why the ruminate, I mean, the rest and rejuvenate card is here as well as a reminder uh, to take that time uh, to, you know, to get things right. So contemplate, meditate just to get it straight. Um, perhaps go out in nature, uh, ground yourself. Those things will help bring that clarity and that transparency to a situation. But there is indecision here, which means someone is stuck in two minds. So who or what you're attracting to you, um, there could have been those moments where you felt like you didn't know which way you know to go, which way to turn. And I feel like you do meet, um, you do get to that point where you do, you do figure it out. 
um, because I see here Eddie Kendrick, someone's name could be Eddie or Kendrick's first, middle or last. And this is called intimate friends. So perhaps this person from the past is a friend that you may have become intimate with. Um, I'm hearing friends of for, with benefits for some of you, but this isn't the case for all of you because I get a strong sense of many of you being like abstinent or, um, uh, you know, just celibate. Uh, for a long time and maybe this is someone who is a friend currently um, that has desires to be intimate with you because remember we had fox, foxy ladies so someone could be very attracted to you uh, and we're about to pull the card for who or what um, who or what you're attracting to you and how they feel about you and so we see here with this rest and rejuvenate they see that you're protecting your energy that you are very you know kind of guarded um, you're grounding yourself um, you're rejuvenating yourself you're going through you know like the soul um, you know transformation almost you know after some sort of karmic uh, completion so it's like a cleanse of sorts uh, and they, they see that and they're aware of that so maybe that's why they're kind of trying to figure out okay um, when to take action how to take action with this eight and four that breaks down um, to, to 12 so that too, again, that is them, you know, kind of observing, you know, because we remember this is who or what you're attracting to. You got the nine nine. So they really want, um, you know, they want your forgiveness. You know, they don't want to be judged because this is someone from the past. Someone's name could be Andy or Eddie or Kendrick's first, middle or last. Um, but this is someone who has some hesitation or maybe they're a little intimidated um you know whatever the case may be maybe this is just you um maybe you know kind of a little hesitant about taking some next steps or you know going in a new direction that could be you um ultimately having some hesitations because you've just overcome a lot you know so it's just like oh man another another battle you know you could be a little hesitant um but i also feel like you know if this is another person you know maybe you will have some reservations uh because it's just like you know you done been there did that and you're not sure if you want to repeat that cycle and so you know if this is someone that you were intimate with or someone you are familiar with i feel like there's going to be a little bit of hesitation or you're going to be a little indecisive because you've just come through a lot so you're not willing to go backwards you're trying to move forward or you are moving forward you're not trying so with rest and rejuvenation as i said in a very protective bubble you know taking care of you yourself and you um as you should especially after you know completing karmic cycles and going through rebirths uh i feel like you're just kind of tapping into your higher self so let's tap in to see how this person feels about you and we have this all tied up on the bottom of the deck for when we pull what's hidden in the energy. So what we see here is financial um, constraints. So how they feel about you is they may be closing out, you know, some sort of um, financial woes. Like maybe this is someone who struggled financially. And so, you know, maybe that's another reason why there's some indecision because they want to come right you know, if they see that you're like independent and self-sufficient, they don't want to come in and drop the ball. So they're kind of conjuring up a plan, thinking of a master plan. Um, you know, this is someone be deep in thought trying to figure out the best ways um, to approach you. Uh, this is someone who also uh, may not have appreciated you before, but now they're learning, you know, because with this 50, 46, that's 10. So maybe this is a turning point in the situation. The wheel is come, you know, the, the 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 circle uh the, the how do you say that um something is coming full circle um there's a turning point in this connection where this person is starting to realize uh their appreciation for you this is the number 15 so this is someone who could have like a strong attraction they could be addicted to you they could be watching you um you know so you have to be mindful with the 46 you both are like kind of mirroring um one another in some sense well not really uh because i feel like you're more so um someone who is kind of very hyper aware because you're looking directly at you know me <laughs> you know this person is looking directly at you the audience and this person is here kind of looking at this object so you know they're kind of trying um you know to listen to their intuition or their angels and their guides and maybe that's what um, will lead them to you because something is ending. Maybe that's the ego death that's taken place because we did see that pride earlier. 
Um, if someone was struggling financially, I do see things are getting stable, you know, because that 13 does break down to four and that represents stability. So I do feel like if there were some constraints and you were struggling, um, even if this is this person, I do feel like there's some improvements or things are getting better. With all tied up, we got this 13 effort. So someone made the effort to break the ties, to break the yokes, to break, you know, these illusions, you know, to break free ultimately. So with this 23-5, I do get a strong sense of there being like secret competition. Um, so if they were stuck and stagnant, I feel like there will be motion because we have Nas singing motion right now, rising um, or rhyming notion motion <laughs> uh someone could be from queens this could be that person that sees you as a queen if you look her headdress is really big large so i do feel like that has a lot to do with like the mind the cerebral you know i'm hearing my mind playing tricks on me so you know the mind is the devil's playground and so with this 13 that could have led uh to the demise of a connection or maybe someone that was feeling all tied up is making the effort to get out of this negative mindset. So divine spirit of peace, power, and wow, that was fast. Why is this 13 effort here for what's hidden in the energy? Thank you, spirit. Bottom of the deck, we have the magician in the mirror. So becoming that alchemist, as I said, turning that pain into power or that vulnerability into a superpower and realizing that you have the el the um, ability to, you know, utilize the elements around you. And that is exactly what you're doing, which is transforming your circumstance through the efforts that you take. And you are now leaning in your strength. So you're no longer um, fearful or, um, you know, hesitant. You're, you're powering ahead because the lion is the king of the jungle and this 20 or this 50 pardon me that this breaks down to is the five so you've matured um to that level of you know leadership to boss you know because remember this is what's next to it so you you matured that's maturation um that's owning and accepting your role as a boss as a leader and your angels have led the way so this is really showing um you know that you went through some sort of initiation and started in metamorphosis and you are being divinely guided and divinely protected and you are also co uh conspiring with source with universe um co-creating even with the you know your angels and manifesting something new you know this is the 53 and this 53 is eight um, and so this is saying that there's, you know, some sort of wish fulfillment, you know, some sort of blessing that is coming through for you. So why is this 81 here for the outcome for my beloved Scorpios? Let me get a message of peace, power and protection, my beautiful spirit. But I do see motion because you are in your power. So you see how these cards are going to fall. I'm going to just let them. And we have the magician in the mirror on the bottom of the deck. So the card that I saw first is the 14-5, divine timing. Patience is a form of action. I also feel like whoever this is is going to reach out and they may, you know, communicate that they love you for life. Um, if this is someone that you um, will discover, like, because I feel like someone is going to just finally emote or express something. They're going to muster up the strength. They're going to take the lead. You know, I just feel like they're going to take the lead, take action and just say how they feel. Um, and this is a caring connection. This is someone that cares deeply. This is someone that is really, you know, invested. You know, I get someone invested, you know, and they're going to be thoughtful and they're going to be chivalrous and they're going to be, you know, very attentive and affectionate and just, you know, emotionally intelligent. And ultimately, they're going to speak your love language. Um, the next card we have is all tied up. So maybe someone is fighting through those those fears or those anxieties that I was picking up earlier or whatever the indecision or confusion is. They're trying to clear that up because remember, we do have the effort card. So someone will absolutely, you know, make the effort and they could be navigating navigating, you know, this terrain as we speak. Um, but we do have, you know, this energy of this, you know, very loving and caring connection with someone who loves you. Someone could be from North Carolina. We could see here we have the garden and the gate. So this garden and the gate is almost like someone kind of, you know, looking out and dreaming. And it's like you got to get past the dream and take action. So I do feel like that's where, you know, this energy is. The three is following your gumption, moving with that sense of, determination and drive towards whatever you may feel is, you know, um, 
important to you or something that you feel is a wish or a dream um, for you. So I feel that your angels, you know, yet again, you know, your community, your team, um, your soul tribe, they are, you know, conspiring in your favor and they are supporting you with whatever this connection is. They are the ones that you can ultimately lean on. And that's where you are, you know, tapping into this energy, you know, tapping into that I imagination or that alchemical force, as I said earlier. So that's very beautiful. I love that. So let's tap in. We're going to get some messages from. Oh man, I feel like I want to get it from Witch's Wisdom. Yes. I was going to do Goddess Guidance, but I do want to get Witch's Wisdom because we're coming into our season. So I want to whip out my, you know, the little dark cards, you know, just to go with the energies. So let's see what we have from Witch's Wisdom, beloveds. And let me turn this down because I don't know if the computer is picking up this music. And I don't want to strazyk. Ah, that's why I was like, which is wisdom. Look at that. Look a looky looky. And that says prosperity. Now remember, we saw that um carnocopia card earlier. And so when you get these type of messages, and we saw that blossoming abundance, you know, when you get these messages and you're in that leadership energy, this just means that your hard work is absolutely going to pay off. And you are also going to have not only financial fulfillment, but I feel emotional fulfillment. Um, we have invocation here. So for many of you, you could be like invoking some sort of money ritual. You know, maybe you're calling on a particular angel or, you know, a particular deity uh, to, you know, you know, set the intention for money to come in. Maybe you're utilizing Baba Alegua or Baba Ogun to open up the roads. Maybe you're lighting those candle, open road candles, um, breakthrough candles, whatever it is, um, dinero candles. Uh, you know, better business candle, like you could be really setting intention. And I feel like something is about to break through for you, beloveds. So let's tap in. Let's see what's coming in, going out, going on. With my beloved Scorpios, we're going to clarify these messages. And then we're going to pull some messages from the actual tarot deck. And then we're going to wrap it up. Ah, shade. So let's see what we got coming in, going out, going on for my beloved Scorpios with the wishes. Uh, wise dome deck like I said I always shuffle until I hear last one please boom bip all right I'm hearing last one with this thank you spirit bottom of the deck we have high priestess there goes that energy I mentioned the energy of the high priestess even with this card the 11 Breaks down to two, trusting your intuition. Remember, when you are indecisive or you're stuck, you're going to tap into that God frequency, that Christ consciousness. Because that high priestess, like I said, she teaches between the spirit realm and the earthly realm. So you can see beyond the veil. You can see what's hidden. And that's what is going to allow for you to detach from anything um, that you may be codependent on, um, a lack mentality even. You're cutting yourself free because you're going to see the truth in the matter. What we have right here is tricky, and this is called aftermath. So you were dealing with a lot of tricky energy. I'm hearing trickster. Um, you could have been dealing with, you know, someone who could have been like, you know, in a devil energy. You could have been dealing with someone who was, you know, really kind of duping you gaslighting you and now you're seeing beyond the illusion um the aftermath is that you had to really you know work through some of those pains so you know whatever loss you experienced you couldn't just stay there and mope and self-loathe you had to pick up you know yourself from the bootstraps and keep it pushing and this is why i feel that the carnocopia and the prosperity cards are showing up because i feel that you've earned some sort of reward and with this grounding energy i feel that's what this person is going to do they're going to take some time you know to meditate get it straight because if they are indecisive this is them going to that meditation mode um you know maybe even consulting with their higher self to figure out what course of action which way to go what to do because maybe the situation is you know a little tricky you know maybe that aftermath of the demise of the relationship if this is a past person was that there was a lot of you know a lot of negativity someone could also be from the uk tricky is from um europe um 
England, I believe. So this could be definitely, you know, that energy of someone who is really, um, you know, kind of navigating uh, those emotions. And they're going to come to some conclusion because once you ground yourself, uh, the indecision, you know, kind of like it, it's, it's, it's quieted because you start listening to the internal self audits. You start to, you know, really start uh, taking those um introspective and ref, uh, reflective um, positions and so you're able to see things clearly so let's see what's coming and going out going on what who or what is our beloved Scorpios attracting to them who or what is this energy why is the nine nine compassion for perseverance and the eight indecision card wow thank you spirit and so we have the witch healing card here and that's going to be there for how this person feels about you so someone may have been hexed and i feel like from this person watching you um because remember we had teaching and learning maybe this person has discovered or learned that there was something you know that they needed to work through there was some spell yoke hex you know that needed to be purged released banished um i see here with this nine nine and this indecision, this could have caused them to be very confused, um, this hex. So if someone was trying to hex you or if there was someone who was hexed, um, I feel like, you know, they're going to take the right course of action and they're going to persevere ultimately and they're going to heal. Um, and I feel maybe someone was attempting to, you know, maybe not even attempting to to hex you or harm you, but whoever this person was may have harmed you because they were dealing with someone um, that may have casted a spell or was doing some sort of voodoo, juju, hoodoo on them. And so I do feel a strong sense of like, you know, someone, you know, was indecisive or confused uh, because they, you know, were definitely dealing with some dark energy. Remember, I was picking up like tricky the devil with the word tricky. Um, so that is someone who will gaslight, dupe you, lie to get whatever they want. The other cards that flew out, we have homecoming. So someone does want to return. I was picking up that there was someone from the past that wants to return. I was picking up like a past life even uh, situation. But with this, how the homecoming, the hearth, this is how someone feels around you. Like you are nurturing, you're loving, you're caring, um, you're a protector, a provider. So someone really feels safe around you my hand right hand is itching like crazy thank you spirit give me all that money where them dollars at give me dollars man where them dollar 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 give me them dollars man okay but um yeah so this is definitely uh something that you know someone realizes like your home you know wherever they may have gone wherever they may have strayed because i heard strayed away um, this could have led to a lot of mind games, confusion. Uh, someone could have suffered mental illness. Someone could have suffered some sort of um, mental breakdown of some sort even. And then we have this card here. And this is called Intention. So someone is going to be very intentional because they do feel that you are like the home, the hearth. You know, this is that person that may see you, like I said, as, you know, that person that they can, you know, have that happy spouse, happy happy house happy spouse type of energy or someone that feels they can give to you equally uh, maybe this is someone who has worked on themselves and and really you know they're seeing things from a different perspective because remember we got the eight and the four there and that's the 12 so whatever they you know had to experience whatever heartbreak or heartache it's like they've recovered um and they're now seeing you through the lens of an empress and a guide um and also you know someone who is very nurturing you know you could be very domestic a great cook a housekeeper uh, maybe you're a great mother father you know but you know how to keep house you're very domestic but you're also self-sufficient in other ways um they also feel that you're a healer so like i said they could have been watching you and many of the things that you have done for yourself because as i said every great healer has to first heal themselves maybe those are the things that they've started to do uh just in watching you maybe like i said they may have you know some means of watching you privately or secretly um and they are learning a lot by watching you whether you realize this or not they see you as a witch like they know that you are into like the occult or you know into metaphysics or you know you are um you know someone who taps in and and utilizes your alchemical force as well uh someone who may not have appreciated you when they had you you know this is someone that could have been trying to control and manipulate and connive and gaslight and love bomb 
Um, and, you know, you could have, you know, discovered that because the 15 breaks down to six and you moved away. You know, you, you literally moved away because I see the six of swords where you could have moved away from a murky situation, a difficult situation. But whatever this person was doing, um, I do feel like, you know, there was... Um, a lesson learned nonetheless like they may have learned uh, we have Benny the butcher this is called ten more commandments so you know the commandments those are you know that's a biblical um, you know rule and bylaw that we all are to you know abide by and be obedient to and so maybe this is someone who broke those commandments um thou shalt not kill thou shalt not uh commit adultery you know those those are the commandments i believe and so that's what this person they may have committed um you know some sort of act against uh the ten commandments um and we got diddy it says featuring diddy uh, so, you know, right now Diddy is going through some sort of karmic lesson right now. Um, you know, all of the dirt he did is now, you know, karmic is being paid off. Like I said earlier, um, you know, it's unfortunate for his children. I really feel for children when they got to sit back and watch things like that. Uh, I will never believe everything I hear in terms of, you know, what he's doing, the details. I feel half of these people coming out with the me too, me too, me too are just looking for money. Um, but I do not deny um, that he is guilty of something because for a long time, I just like, why is everybody around him broke and he the only one eating? I, like, I, I just was not a fan of his for a long time, just in the way he did business and how he treated treated people the locks had to literally go on a campaign and 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 really like tell people how grimy he was and you know he was robbing every single one of his artists you know it was it's just not good business and when you treat people that way you better be prepared to receive that back you know but I don't want to hear nothing about no parties like that ish right there is just like to me y'all people was partying with him everybody and their mama was at them parties everybody we see on TV in movies playing basketball all of them folks was at the party and it's very deafening how silent all of these individuals are and that to me just speaks grief that speaks guilt you know so everybody's guilty if that's the case but I digress so with this here you know the healer I do feel like there was absolutely uh, some healing um, that took place in this time apart in this you know pause uh, and that's the reason why there's more compassion in this person's heart because they were able to kind of like analyze or assess things um, on their own and maybe they're discovering like they had some sort of hex yoke or curse or spell um, we have love so fine playing and we're pulling the card for you or how they feel about you rather and this is the black birds um and we know birds are you know those are like the ways that our angels will send a message you know it could be um you know a message that is being communicated to you maybe some of you are finding black feathers um you know that black is very powerful uh, color everything comes from back black every color comes from black so let's tap in why is this 10 karmic completion Thank you, Spirit. So this card wants to fly out. Um, the uh, three, creativity, 56, relationship change, 13, financial constraints, 46, thinking man, and 15, appreciation, bottom of the deck. We have shadow. So someone could be, you know, doing some shadow work because that's the card on the bottom of the deck when we pull for what's hidden. But the card that pulled out is we have cycles, moon. So you've been going through some cycles, you know, and you're on the precipice of a new chapter. So whatever this cycle is, I do feel something's manifesting in real time but this also is speaking to emotion you know the moon is very indicative of emotion it's very indicative of indicative of the intuition so trusting the mind it's also revealing what's hidden so this person may have some hidden feelings hidden emotions um, maybe there's you know this cycle now that's you know kind of coming around where you have another opportunity with this person i feel there's also this feeling where this person is fearing perhaps um that you are about to you know shut them out because you still have the completion card here in cycles maybe this person is waiting uh to come towards you once a cycle is wrapped up and then they feel this sense of confidence to come towards you for what's hidden in the energy uh, with the scrying mirror uh, shadow someone is absolutely doing their shadow work hence the 13 effort so this is requiring a lot of effort because there is a lot um, you know to you know cords to cut there's a lot to 
you know, to heal um, and even to, you know, unprogram yourself. You know, there's a lot to unlearn. So with this 50, the strength card, I do feel change. I do feel a strong sense of like, because the 50 and the 13 reduces to nine. And that nine, as I said, is, uh, you know, that is the highest number and vibration of change. Um, and so I do get a strong sense of what's hidden is, you know, maybe there's someone who's kind of still up in their head because I'm seeing like the nine of swords um, and they could be in the nine of swords energy because you're in the nine of wands where you are very guarded. Um, and this is because you've been, you know, backstabbed, betrayed uh, repeatedly, you know, by people that you loved and trusted. And so now you've established those boundaries. What we have playing right Right now uh, is we have Damian Marley and it says um, there for you. So I feel like what's hidden is this person, um, you know, may express, you know, because we got the angel of strength. So they could be mustering up the strength, courage and wise dome um, to, you know, kind of express to you that they will be there for you, that they want to be there for you. Someone's name could be Damian or Marley, first, middle, last. Someone could be from Jamaica. Someone may also chief a lot of ganja, a lot of green um, with this shadow. That could be some of the shadow work they're doing. Maybe someone is kicking that addiction or, you know, trying not to smoke as much as frequently. Why is this 13 effort and 50 angel of strength here? Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection. Someone could uh, strongly have an herb addiction, and maybe that has impacted someone's ability to get, to get jobs. And so this card is sticking out, and I want to take that one. And so we have the um, dedication, and it says altar. So, yeah, there's a lot of, you know... Um, Focus on building and nurturing and cultivating a relationship with your angels and your guides. So many of you have altars. Um, you may have an off altar that is um, for some of the deities that I mentioned earlier. Archangel Mikael, Raphael, um, Baba Ogun, Baba Alegua, Mama Yemenya, Mama Oshun even. Um, you know, this altar is what is is, is strengthening um, your, connected, your, your connection to your guides. Um, just making that acknowledgement, giving those um, offerings uh, that's what's strengthening your connection and they are also acknowledging the efforts you know that you're making in uh, developing and you know those connections and this is what's keeping you grounded you know with earth here someone could be an earth sign as well let me see what what is the outcome why is this 81 leadership 14 caring connection 23 all tied up 30 thank you spirit let me finish my shuffle bottom of the deck and we have Watchtower. What did I say? Someone's watching you. Someone's definitely keeping tabs with winter. Maybe this person will take action or say something during the winter. And look what we have. You'll re rebirth. So there could be some sort of right reconciliation or you could be rekindling a connection with someone. I'm strongly seeing because you have rebirth that came out twice um, that there has been major transformations and major shifts, you know, in this connection. Um, and this shift is going to shift, you know, this this whole situation ultimately because we got the nine the five five and five that's ten that's one one and three that's four four and seven eleven so this is definitely that person that can you know really see you as someone that's wifey they could see you as someone that they you know want to be there for you know this is someone that could see themselves with you see you with them they could see themselves happen that have having the happily ever after and they do watch you know look at that i can't make this up look Look what's on the bottom of the deck. You got the Ace of Cups, you know, and that 11, all those 11s, that one, what did I say about the ones? You know, that's when you heal thyself. When you heal yourself, then you can offer love to someone else. So two people have healed themselves. That's why there is two ones. So this person has taken the time to heal themselves. You've healed yourself. And that's why the cards were mirroring at some point. And this is why there is a reward because you've done the soul work. You've done the grunt work. And you get rewarded when you do the work. So this is very, very powerful, my beautiful Scorpios. I love to see this. This is so dope. So let's get some messages from Tarot. And then we're going to wrap it up. So I am, my nose is itching like crazy. And for all of you who are returning, you already know when my nose is itching, that means I'm on the nose of this reading. So I definitely feel like this message may resonate with many of you who are tuning and tapping in. If it does, please be kind and just comment below so that you can help others. On the bottom of the deck, we have dun, 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 the lovers. So we have the lovers here. I'm using the sex magic card um, cards. 
So we have the lovers. So there could have definitely been um, some sort of third party in the past because uh, that's why, you know, perhaps there was some sort of demise in the relationship, friendship, or the demise in something because there was some other entity or something else that was interrupting, you know, a connection. Um, but with the lovers, I do feel that there is some strong soul tie or this could be someone from the past, as I said initially. The next card we have is the two of chalices. I can't make this up. So there goes the two of chalices. What did I say about this 11, you know, being like the two of cups? And this is why you have to be patient, you know, because as you're working on yourself and healing and learning to, you know, stand in your own independence, um, you know, that requires time, effort and energy for you to get to a place where you are able to stand on your own. And, you know, someone is definitely feeling, you know, feeling you with the two and the six that reduces, you know, to eight. And so there is a positive movement forward. And I feel it has a lot to do with you now trusting your intuition and not just going with words or what someone says or the love bombing or whatever the case may be you're now using your intuition and you're not submitting your will so let's tap in why is um let's clarify the messages for the overall energy why is this 11 individuality the five attachments and the high priestess here for what the overall energy is for my beloved scorpio so we got a couple of messages that just flew out and i'm just going to expound on those because that was a very sloppy shuffle and I want to do it again but I do want to see what flew out make sure I got all all of the cards okay thank you so the cards that flew out we have the wheel of fortune so what did I say you know when the when we are at the karmic completion or at the end of the you know the 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 um cycle that means that the wheel is turning there is forward movement so something that's destined is going to come so it's like if there were delays of any kind of any sort those those delays are being removed by spirit spirit is turning things around um, for you positively uh, the next card we have is the eight of swords so this was that energy that we uh, were feeling right here where someone was like indecisive I mentioned that energy so this is that person that's confused and conflicted and it could be you know because there is you know whenever I see this entity in the back that looks like a devil to me sneaky energy so that is that energy of that person that could have been like you know kind of like doing secret things uh, trying to hex a situation trying to block a connection you know intentionally trying to confuse someone someone could have been you know kind of like uh, um, a gin, a sex gin, you know, a harlot of some sort using sex as a weapon, you know, and so that could have had someone like really confused and up in their head, ultimately um, unable to make a decision. Um, and it's because, you know, when you are laying with, you know, an energy vampire that will affect your energy. The next card we have is we have the two of swords. What did I say? Being stuck in two minds, confused and conflicted. Um, if you look closely, you know, there is this energy where, you know, this man is trying to kind of woo this person and there's like a chicken off in the back. It's almost like, you know, there's some sort of spell or ritual that's taken place because, you you know, when you see chickens like that, they usually use them um, when they're doing some sort of ritual. So someone could have um, sacrificed a chicken when they did some sort of ritual or spell or cast a spell on another person is what I'm picking up. But I'm getting dark magic because that's like a black chicken. Um, and so I'm getting black magic. So this hex card is being confirmed by all of these very dark cards. And next you have the Hierophant. And so someone has built their spiritual prowess um, from this experience. Like with the Hierophant, someone could have been seeking advice or going to um, you know, like someone, a hierophant, a high, uh, a high priestess, or someone who ranks high spiritually, like a practitioner to seek some sort of advice or to get some sort of um, assistant with breaking a hex or a yoke or a curse or a spell. Um, and what you can see here is we have the Knight of Swords. So there is definitely like, you know, you can see people watching and looking. So there was a mockery, like someone was made um, you know, was made a mockery of like, this is like, this is a very dark energy, uh, cause people are watching and seeing, uh, someone be mistreated. Um, you could see here, maybe someone, uh, thought that they were, you know, kind of like what they were doing was behind closed doors and someone could have like set up a, a, um, a camera or took pictures or, you know, someone could have like literally, you know, because that's kind of similar to what's going on with with um, Diddy and all these crazy 
Holly weird people right now is like, you know, all of their dark secrets are coming to light. Um, and so, you know, there's going to be something, perhaps there was something that was revealed about someone that you very well may not have, you know, known was their truth or their reality. Uh, so what we got on the split is we have, it's very hard for me to see these cards. Um, it's the two of pentacles. So juggling, um, and then we have this energy here, the navel. So, so someone is really, really like, you know, trying to get it together, you know, because they he looks like he's been just writing, you know, letter after letter, and is, the words aren't getting, aren't coming out right, and you know, all they want is 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 to be forgiven for their misdeeds or their wrongdoings. Um, they feel foolish because we have a Shanti um, foolish playing and got Terrence Howard. Um, as a cameo in this. So someone's name could be Ashanti or uh, someone could be from in the Ashanti tribe in Africa or someone's uh, name could be Terrence or Howard. Someone could be from, I believe she's from Long Island, if I'm not mistaken. Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection spirit. Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection. All right, thank you, spirit. We're going to cut this deck and we're going to Wrap it up after we get these messages, beloved, because we are approaching two hours. Get a message of peace, power, and protection. I'm hearing the last one. After this, one more. There we go. Thank you, bottom of the deck, overall energy. And we have... This is the Nine of Swords. So remember I was saying that someone was like, you know, up in their head, confused, and stuck. And if you look closely, there is a black cat kind of like, you know, in between these two. It looks like a tuxie because I see white feet. Or am I seeing things? Oh, no, that's the lady's foot. I'm sorry. So this nine, it, like this is about being impervious to threat. And that's why this high priestess is here as well. So, you know, whatever was going on privately or, you know, behind the scenes, it's like you may not have been privy to it, but it's like your intuition has led you to see, um, you know, that you were in a codependent relationship, that you were holding on to something that wasn't very healthy for you. And so you eventually, you know, took this sword and cut yourself free. Because remember, let go was playing when we first touched the deck and we got Ashanti singing foolish. So someone could have very well felt foolish for a spell because you felt very very unfamiliar to even yourself you know you're looking at this mask like who am i you know how did i allow this to get out of hand like this you know what what is you know who what what is going on you know and so when you broke free from that connection you were able to see everything clearly because you were not you know what you were no longer in it you know what i mean so let's tap in so what we have on the bottom of the deck is we have the temperance so divine timing everything happens in divine timing and in you know divine order and this temperance is telling you and reminding you that patience is a form of action. And so you don't rush to take action or rush to make a decision. You take the time to get it straight. You take the time to meditate. You take the time to contemplate. And then you take action. Whoever this is that you're attracting to you, I do feel like spirit is saying that this is going to you know, happen or this person may come towards you um, in divine timing. Perhaps right now they're feeling a little foolish because you know they may have fumbled the ball with you, dropped the ball as well. I'm hearing so who or what is our beloved Scorpios attracting to them let me get a message a peace power and protection spirit thank you spirit that was quick and we have on the bottom of the deck we have the nine of wands so you could be coming off very guarded because this is the card for when we pull how they feel about you so like I said guarded um that that nine of wands also kind of showcases like a wounded warrior but still you got fight you got that dog in you still so you're not allowing yourself um to ever fall for the okie doke again or to be mistreated or depre you know um, unappreciated or devalued in any way shape form or fashion what we have here is the four of wands so who or what you're attracting to you is 1111 that's the 1111 the four wands card so this could be like a twin flame a soulmate i see that there's going to be a lot of spontaneity um maybe a lot of sexual attraction like i said this is someone that's going to let you like they just want you to take control you know they may you know be very sexually attracted to you um there may be a strong sexual chemistry mystery or connection so you may be very spontaneous when it comes to your intimacy with this person um but this is someone that definitely like with um intimate friends playing earlier when we were pulling this card i do feel like this person may even have like these visions or they may have these um you know these kind of like um day dreams of like sexual and intimate moments um or maybe this could even 
you know, be them, you know, wanting to, you know, kind of rebuild a connection and they may be really, I just feel they got sex on the brain. <laughs> This is someone very strongly sexually attracted to you because remember we had that, you know, Foxy Lady playing. It was a couple of songs and um, that was playing, you know, with Home and Hearth. I was getting from this, you know, they're setting the intention. They're trying to manifest you perhaps, you know, because the 7-7 seven, seven spirituality shows that that's you and the person you're attracting to you. So both of you right now are in, you know, kind of like hermit mode in solid, you know, solitude, really working on the self. And um, these are, you know, perhaps like, you know, daydreams, them thinking of you renting space in, you know, you're renting space in their mind. They're having these whole sexcapades in their mind. Um, we have Celia Cruz and Johnny Pacheco. And um, this is uh, in October 1974. So this is for my fellow October uh, Scorpios who were born in 1974. This is our big 5-0 year. So blessings to each and every one of you all. Um, this is called Kinshasa. So this is um, Celia Cruz who is a beautiful, um, you know, entertainer. She's a powerful force, powerful singer. I remember seeing her growing up. I, like I said, I'm very universal when it comes to music. I grew up around, you know, Jamaicans, Puerto Ricans, so I listen to all that music. I grew up around, you know, Bayesian, so I listen to Calypso. I like all kinds of music. Um, grew up around my white folk. I love my white music. <laughs> I love. I just love music. And it's not even like, you know, I, they do separate it by genre, you know, so pop and rock and, you know, I'm calling it white music. But I, I love um, all kinds of music, so I just have a little bit of everything in my um, in my playlist, but with this energy on the bottom of the deck, the nine of wands, how they feel about you is they feel very, very, um, confused and conflicted. And I feel even anxious, you know, and you can see that she is being very attentive to this person. Um, there is a bird flying in. So I do feel like, you know, unexpectedly, this person may just kind of take action after they mustered up the strength of the courage, uh, to come toward you. So how does this person, my beloved Scorpios are attracting to them, feel about them? Let me get a message of peace, power and protection. Thank you, spirit. And there's another message, bottom of the deck. And we have the Four of Swords. So the Four of Swords, like I said, repairing, recovering. That's going to be the card on um, for when we pull what's hidden. So the messages that came out is we have the Knave of Pentacles. So that's like the Page of Pentacles. So this is someone, when I see this, I see this person like, you know, pouring liquor down her throat. She looks like she's being taken advantage of. And his face looks so sinister. You know what I'm saying? It's like he's hiding his face, hiding his intentions. And so that's why I just get a strong sense of like, you know, you were dealing with someone who could have really been causing a lot of financial constraints because maybe they were taking the money and just blowing it. Maybe they had an addiction or some sort of affliction because I was picking up devil energy. And that could just speak to like addictions and afflictions, whether sexual, financial. This is someone who's just like really, um, you know, irresponsible. And so that whole situation um, led to a major change. Uh, it also, you know, for how this person feels about you, maybe this is someone who, um, you know, really wants to, um, you know, because the pages, I mean, the pentacles is really that energy of, you know, really giving you something tangible. Um, so this is like taking, uh, some sort of making an effort to give you something tangible. Let me see what this next card shows. So this is the wheel. Okay. So they want to turn a, a bad situation around. Um, this is like, you know, what's destined. So it's like what, how they feel about you is they want to turn something around. This could have been how it ended, you know, where maybe you both were under the influence. Things could have been said, a lot of hostility. And, you know, this could have led to the demise. Maybe someone felt taken advantage of or mistreated, or maybe because someone was under the influence, they were very cold and disheart, you know, very disheartening. Um, and so they want to turn things around with the wheel of fortune. I'm strongly getting like there's a turning point where there is some opportunity uh, for something that's destined or written 
and then the stars to take place. This also speaks to like, you know, fortune, fame, blessing. So this is, you know, how they feel about you. They may see you as someone very fortunate or very blessed. Um, wishes are coming true. Um, what's on the bottom of the deck? My nose is itching like crazy. It's still the four swords. And this is yet another person just pouring liquor down another person's throat. And this is what's hidden. So maybe that's the transformation. Stop abusing alcohol. Stop abusing weed. Stop abusing, you know, these drugs, popping pills, whatever it is. Someone dedicated the time, you know, building that connection and cultivating a relationship with their ancestors, which could, which could have ultimately broke that yoke, that hex, that spell, or just that that um, addiction in and of itself. And that's why they're now stronger. Because that's what I'm getting with all these cards. It just looks like someone just, he's like grabbing her head and forcing the liquor down her throat. This one is holding her arm and she looks like she's already tipsy and he's just pouring liquor. Someone could have been taken advantage of also, I'm getting, like someone could have been like slipped, um, you know, when it, what's that called? A Mickey? or something like that and then they woke up the next day and and that's kind of like similar to what a lot of um you know people's stories are you know what the diddy case is like you know um just i don't even want to talk about that but you know maybe that's a similar situation uh where some of you you know may have felt like you were taken advantage of when you were under the influence um you know and so there was no communication or you know you you maybe that's what led to abstinence i'm feeling you know, there's no communication, meaning you weren't looking or interested in developing any relationships because you were still recovering and healing from that, um, you know, from that circumstance. And if that is the case where you were taken advantage of, um, I'm sending you infinite love and light and healing energy uh, that should never happen to anyone. I don't care. Um, so what we have, let's see, why is this 13? Thank you, spirit. That was so fast. Let me finish my shuffle. Thank you, spirit. Bottom of the deck. We have the uh, Three of Chalices. So remember I was saying there was going to be some celebrations. And you can see this man, it's almost like he's proposing to this woman. You know, it looks like he's pulling the um, that garter belt off her leg. Is that what he's doing? I can't tell. Or he's just down on his knees begging. You know, begging for her forgiveness. Asking for her forgiveness. If he's not begging. We have Bonnie Tyler. Uh, Bonnie Tyler. Total, total eclipse of the heart. And we just had an eclipse last week or the week before, you know, and when I think of the the eclipses, I feel like that's like cutting you free from, you know, certain energies that no longer serve you. The card that flew out, we have the five of swords. So yet again, this is like, you know, I just see a harlot. I see uh, someone who's using sex to get what they want. The five of swords is also showing, you know, like someone had to be strong to perhaps turn down sexual, um, you know, sexual uh, gestures by another person if they were in a relationship. Uh, but it looks like they could have felt fallen for the okie doke. But I see that, you know, like. There is an effort now to change and to transform. You know, someone is realizing that, um, you know, your sexual partners um, should be chosen. You know, it, it should be chosen very carefully, you know, and intentionally. And you shouldn't just sleep with anybody because, as I said, you know, you could be sleeping with an energy vampire. You could be sleeping with a sex gin who got about a thousand bodies, you know, and all that energy is going to be just interrupting your peace. Um, and, you know, that could be the reason why this hex energy is there because it feels like a spell. It feels um, like a very dismal place to be. Uh, so that could be why there's there was confusion and conflict of, um, you know, of many kind. Um, so let's tap in. So we have this five of chalices. So on the bottom of the deck. So that five of chalices is showing me, you know, if there was someone who may have made, um, you know, some mistakes in the past with some of the decisions with this five of swords. I see this person now trying to take onus and accountability, trying to, you know, right their wrongs even. You know, he's being very humble. But I still feel like there's a strong need for you to trust your intuition with this energy because, you know, the five of chalices could just be someone who is, you know, really just, um, you know, kind of like, not really sure, you know, maybe they weren't sure in the past and now maybe they are sure. And that's why they are like down on bended knee. Um, cause it looks like they just traveled in to see you. He looks like he's wearing a bag. Cause when you think of five of cups in traditional tarot, it's like, you know, there's two cups behind him and with total eclipse of the heart, this person has gone through some sort of, tr you know, transformation. There was some emotional loss. 
um, that took place. Someone's name could be Bonnie or Tyler, first, middle, or last, and would turn around. I do feel this person wants to turn this situation around overall. So why is the 81 leadership, 14, um, caring connection, all tied up, 23, uh, 30, the garden and the gate, 7, community and Yule uh, rebirth here for the overall energy. And you have a bonus message because this card is facing um, backwards. And so I just want to show you this message. And this is the hanged man. And remember, we saw the hanged man or we mentioned the hanged man earlier when we saw 57, the teaching and learning card. So that hanged man is this person has a new perspective. They're seeing you in a different light. Um, this person even looks a little obsessed. You can see how he's just kind of like, just it lo looks like he's sniffing her. He's trying to breathe her effervescence even. You know, like he is just like, he is obsessed, you know. So this person is watching from a distance. The card that flew out is the high priestess. So you have the high priestess twice. So that's why I was picking up trust your intuition. You know, don't do anything unless it sits right or feels right in your spirit. Because, you know, you very well could still be dealing with a devil who could be trying to trick you. Because remember, we had Tricky um, that was playing earlier. Some of you all could be from the UK, Europe, uh, Germany. Um, you know, some of you could be from Africa, Jamaica. I was picking up uh, Virginia, um, Florida, North Carolina. Um, some of you all could be from the Bronx, Long Island, Brooklyn, uh, Queens, um, you know, we have this energy here on the bottom of the deck. This is the Knight of Swords. Again, you know, be mindful, you know, like don't let anybody trick you into doing something that is out of your character because I feel like it could be a setup because I'm seeing this energy here where these people are watching. So I don't know if someone may have a hidden camera or someone could be trying to line someone up to kind of, you know, kind of, um, I don't know if it's like, to, to um, set them up, like sabotage them in some way, but just be mindful. But overall, I feel like you all are very much aware of, you know, what you're dealing with and who you're dealing with. And I feel you're very wise intuitively. So I don't even foresee you like falling for the okie doke. I feel very much that your intuition right now is super sharp. You are coming into your season. So I do feel like right now is very important to pay attention to everything because the veils are thin during this this time so you got a lot of those energies entities and you know like all of those like those dark energies especially just kind of like looming and you know wandering the earth right now and so you may not be able to decipher um who's who or what's what so it's very important to always use your first eye to see don't allow anyone or anything uh to trick you into doing anything that you don't feel um comfortable doing i also feel like you know on the flip side of that you have other you know individuals that you know you may have several uh you know individuals that are interested in you because when you are showing up as an emperor or an emperor you're just attractive period you know so everybody may want to bide for your attention or they may want you know um you know, to be just in your, you know, in your space, you know, they want to be around you. So, you know, just be very mindful, be very, very mindful and very aware of who you allow in your cipher, even if there's someone from the past attempting to come towards you or coming back with an apology. Um, remember what I always say, apologies are for you. Um, you know, forgiveness is for you. Um, you know, you don't have to accept anyone's apology if, um, you know, you don't feel that there's any genuinity in it. If, if it's not authentic, then you can just leave that apology right where it is. But forgiveness ultimately is yours. Um, it's for you to continue to thrive and grow and evolve so that you're not anchored and stuck holding on to the past because you have these animosities and anxieties and, you know, res resentments and frustrations. And so it's like, that's for you. So if someone is coming toward you and you see changed behavior and you feel like they're being honest and open and transparent, transparent, then of course you can, you know, forgive them. Um, if you are uh, someone who has a past person that's coming in to, you know, try to rekindle something, then I would absolutely encourage you to, um, you know, just kind of trust your intuition when it comes to inviting past people into your life. Because a lot of times, uh, you know, when you go through karmic lessons, that means that you've learned a lesson. And if you allow someone from the past back in, you could be repeating that cycle all over again. And if that's not something you're interested in doing, especially being that it was a very uh, difficult um, 
lesson for you to learn um you might want to just kind of like you know just forgive and and keep it pushing and let go like Layla Hathaway said but overall I feel like you have victories you have blessings I feel things are coming through for you because of all of the hard work and effort that you have um put forth into your healing process and so I just feel you all have so much to be thankful for so much to be proud of and I really feel like there's something special just coming in. And uh, you just need to continue to keep your eyes on the prize, beloved. But thank you so much for tuning and tapping in. I'm sending you a big fat ashe. Oh, for every one of you that are tuning and tapping in, if you found that this video read is resonated, <laughs> please be kind. Hit that like, the share, the subscribe. Help get the video into the algorithm so that it can help others. And until next time, I send a big fat ashe. Oh, happy 1010 to you all. Peace, love, and light.